So welcome. We are this welcoming. In the light of awareness. effortlessly and uh, impersonally shining. Knowing itself It's a sweet knowingness. There are no obstacles in this knowingness. I know I am. This, this I that is never uh, extinguished. Irrespective of what's appearing irrespective of whatever situations. Whatever thoughts are appearing. On one hand, it's, it's so simple. It's not something that you have to figure out. But you can relax into it yourself relaxing into yourself rather than and the concerns about past and future. The recognition 
of the transparency of being, recognizing itself, resting naturally, effortlessly, Everything we do, we, everything we experience, is a, a coloration of this transparency. which is undisturbed by thoughts, perceptions, images, memories, sensations. There is no impression of separation within awareness. It's indivisible, like the Ocean cannot be divided into any parts. Like the wide open sky, the infinite spaciousness of being cannot be divided into this side and that side. There's nothing you need to do to be that which you are. Rather, not to seem the unhappiness and falsehood of referring to yourself as a immortal body-mind, as an object, as a man, a woman, a person. It's a falsehood because the me impression, the images of stories and thoughts and sensations arise within the spaciousness of awareness. You perceive them you are not limited by that which you perceive Like a, a rose is not limited by its perfume. The sun is not limited by its light or the heat. The ocean is not limited by the waves, their shape and size of waves and currents. It's 
It's the, the peace of being and the freedom of being is your very nature. Maybe a seemingly veiled by the narrative of the mind about me, my life, my past, my future, my spiritual progress. It's a seemingly veiled because the wide open sky is not veiled by the clouds. It's no issue. with the clouds appearing, whatever shapes they take. Like gold has no issue with whatever shape it's given, the ring and necklace. A gold coin. But to to know oneself as that, as this transparent aware presence. be clear in this very moment that I am the infinite invisible reality of being, not some personal script about somebody with a past and future, past trauma, future ambitions. To be clear that I, this reality, the reality of of awareness of consciousness is is not something which exists in time and space. Being a person refers to the body, does not refer to I, consciousness, to you, awareness. Tall body, short body, female body, black body, yellow body, young body, old body, somebody. It's about the body, not about your reality. Your car may be yellow or red or blue or black. Maybe 10 year old or two year old, but does not refer to you. The impression that you are your car is a, a false impression. And it leads to misunderstanding and uh, erroneous living. Yes, you 
can take care of the car. Take it for a spin. Give it a wash or a change. But well, where are you in this moment of being? Any moment, every moment. Is it not? beyond description and yet absolutely real. Bodies come and go, personalities change. To be together as one this recognition of our limitless and formless and infinite beingness. Where are the, the concerns in the wide open space of being? What, is, what are we defending? Is there any need to defend anything as, as awareness? Of course, we take care of the, of the body, of the world, of the mind. But that is worry free. There's no existential angst. And if there is an existential angst, can we look into that? What is it that is at stake, if not part of a story? some belief, some feeling, or a set of feelings that are given so much importance. Look how the The wind blows in the orchard, and the leaves sway, some fall off, leave the branch and make their way down to the earth, to the ground. There's no struggle. Although there may be a personal impression, we are capable of seeing it as sensation, thoughts, images, a neutral body mind event arising. Nothing needed to be fixed. The clarity that 
but I'm not defined by it. Senses of the perception, which flow like a stream, cosmic events. No personal aspect whatsoever, whatsoever except when I choose to. Spend a personal character with a personal story and personal regrets and hopes. And as I spin this me story, I sort of fall into it. Oh my goodness, what has happened to me? What, what will happen to me? Oh boy, will I be able to make it? We fall into our own spin. And yet, at any moment, here it is. This freedom, this transparent awareness, presence, this joy of being, has nothing to do with any images on the screen. It's okay with whatever images arise on the screen, let it be. In a way, it's a play. You are the choreographer in the, the entire set of the play, and you are all the players as one. So there is a discrimination which is available to us, Viveka, between that which appears to be I and the reality of consciousness, the real I, to discern that I am not the me story, and to notice this tendency of the mind to be preferring to I as a person, a man, a woman, somebody, I, as, as some past creature, past entity.
so we can get beyond the hypnosis. Well, if you have any questions, anything you would like to share, explore? Hello, Holger. Hello, Magdi. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for this light and this openness. And um, it's so ridiculous, this hypnotism sometimes. Yeah, it complicates things, doesn't it? Thank you. Because we're already in God's Eden, in God's garden. We don't have to jump over all. The hoops, the hoops, jump over the hoops. Different images, different images. I, I don't know how to describe it, but I have this feeling like uh, mentally I'm kind of degrading a little bit. What do you mean? Like, like I become a little bit more dumb or something. <laughs> but on another level, there is lots of peace and uh, yeah, joy. So, uh, yeah, I sort of relate to what you are saying in that there is like a, a childlike quality to being not a childish quality, but a childlike quality. Um, an innocence, a spontaneity, the, a lot of the structures at the mind level uh, soften and release. 
So yeah, there, there is the impression that uh, and sort of, I wouldn't say, that the mind becomes dumb, rather it becomes more spontaneous. There is what is needed at the time, the moment in, in that the situation sort of arises out of out of the totality, out of consciousness. Um, so rather than being like a store of knowledge, we are the spontaneous wisdom of understanding and perceiving and waiting, uh, gathering information, inquiring, as a wisdom in that. It's quite different from being a store, a store of knowledge. It's a, it's a lighter way of being. And uh, it's a more relaxed and trusting, trusting the universe, trusting God, trusting consciousness. Because in a way, that is what life is. Life is the entire unfolding, including what appears to us and our capacity to distinguish. Oh, wait a minute, that, if I go in that direction, I'm stepping on my brother, I'm stepping on my sister. If I go in that direction, it seems to be, yeah, it's, I think that's more, it takes more, it takes the other in consideration. So I'm going to go in that direction. It's a whole universe that's sort of manifesting through you, including the wisdom, the understanding, which is not personal. We don't, we're not personally doing anything because there's no actual person. There's no, there's no consciousness is not divided in persons. It's, it's, it's like the sun, the, the sunshine is not divided in rays, it's the sunshine. So there is a sort of dumbness, which is, which is okay. Not to worry, because when you have your hand in God's hand, he, there is no better, there is no better, like a child, you know, hold, holding the parent's hand, they just, you know, you look at the child, they're like, you know, looking right and left, and it seems like, oh, goodness, you know, they don't seem to be with it, but their hand is in mama's hand and papa's hand. So similarly, understanding that our hand is in God's hand, Consciousness, this awareness that is my awareness, is God's awareness. Shining through this body mind, perceiving whatever is being perceived through the body mind instrument. And what better light is there than the light of consciousness? Which shines onto the mind and and brings clarity onto the mind, so the mind, the creative aspect of the mind, are, of course, of course, enlightened by the light of consciousness, rather than by the ignorance of the belief that, oh, consciousness is this, I am this personal consciousness, and you're this personal consciousness, and I'm existing in time and space, you see? So as you said, you know, you're experiencing more peace. That's beautiful. Because from the peace and as the peace, <laughs> I mean, that says it all, doesn't it?
I don't know if um, there's a certain mental laziness maybe inside of me. I don't know. I, I always often, most of my life, I just, I'm so passive inside of myself. I mean, I'm, I'm not eager to do stuff or to participate in life and all of this. Um, well. are, are you happy? Yes and no. I mean, yes, I'm happy, but there's, there's just so many nagging voices still inside of my system. This idea of a certain person, and I know that this is all just hypnotism, but it just still flares up. Or, mm -hmm. But it's getting better. You can be lazy if you're happy being lazy. We sometimes we need to tend to certain things. So there is an uh, uh, there is appropriate and inappropriate laziness. So the the inappropriate laziness is the only one you have to be with. <laughs> Not a problem. Yes. Thank you, Mac. This may be difficult for some German thinking. <laughs> Maybe easier for a, a Middle Eastern mind, I don't know. <laughs> Well, okay, I'm just saying that, but the <laughs> grain of salt, okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I mean, we're not going anywhere. We're not trying to achieve anything. So. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's like this whole thing about doing, 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 doing. It's you should enjoy, you know, you enjoy. You just you can do a million things and not finish any of them. Who cares? If you're enjoying. <laughs> <laughs> Years ago, I lived with this friend, a really sweet person, and uh, she loved arts and crafts, and and so she, she would start these projects of arts and crafts, and sewing things, making coats, uh, some paintings on the wall, some other sculptures, and all of this. And the house was all, uh, there were like projects everywhere. <laughs> they were all sort of progressing simultaneously and new projects were being also. Uh, I was okay with it. But eventually we built a, an arts and crafts space. It helped a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Hi, Magdi, it's Marga. Hello, Marga. Hi. Hey. I can relate to your friend, your arts and crafts friend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> and I notice there's a difference between the, there's an impulse that's joyful. And then sometimes it switches to the chaos can feel mm -hmm. heavy and, yes. um, and um, so I, I work with my body, I notice a lot, because it gives me signals when I'm thinking I'm a person. <laughs> and it'll be like, feel bodily stress of right. finishing something or, or judgment for why can't I finish something. Um, but the body tells me the thought, the incorrect thought more than mm -hmm. recognizing the thinking. So then I can just sort of like, oh, there's stress in the body. So then the breath helps me remember yes. <laughs> that it, everything's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to follow the joy of the impulse and it's okay to let it go if it didn't get finished. I'm learning that, but, um, you know, even work, the kind of work we do to make money can bring that same body yes. sensation. Um, it's a constant back and forth for me right now of, especially with my work of like right now, I've got a deadline like by tonight, a course opens online and I want it to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. So just listening to you today helps me get back to the breath and to just mm -hmm. just do one thing at a time and it'll be okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to be perfect, you know, like some image I have in my mind of what I want it to look like and mm -hmm. be like. But um, I think in some ways the, the body's helping me bypass a whole lot of thinking about it. Um, yes. Uh see there is a certain angst that is sort of the functional type of angst you know about deadlines or certain body mind activities work related or and there is angst about our true nature, existential angst. So the angst about our true nature, about the existential angst, about me, I as consciousness, is 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 the is the the, the crux of the of the matter. that as consciousness it's all it's freedom and creativity and joy. nothing is happening to consciousness nothing is happening to I at the existential level that's, that's the main angst that's what's going to happen to me behind the scenes sort of the me thing I am on the other hand, the, the angst that comes with activity, deadlines, and so on is more like a functional a body mind aspect of, of our existence. And for the existential angst, it's important to come to clarity that you are not Marga, that I is awareness, I is consciousness. And that consciousness is eternal, infinite, invisible, real, the reality of everything, the reality of being. There's not, no experience as possible without consciousness. No thought, no perception, no sensation, no image, no creativity, nothing, nothing is possible without conscious, consciousness. And yet consciousness is not an object. And I know I am, I know that. I am. This I know that I am is precedes, precedes. I know that the body is a female body that mom and dad called Marga. There's no problem with that. There's no issue with that. But 
not to confuse the I with whatever the body mind is named or is experiencing or is, is, is functioning. So that's at the existential level to have to come to clarity about what I is and also to understand that this consciousness is like the wide open sky is available to everything and anything, anything that appears in it is, is dissolves in it because there is no limit. It's not like you're trying to put something inside a bottle, you know. It is, there's no, there are no, there's no, sh no edges or shapes to consciousness. Anything that appears in consciousness is like, it's like waves in the ocean. They just sort of, nothing is happening to the ocean. It's the wave is just water. The ocean is water. It's all one. So at the feeling level, and that's also helpful, by the way with the functional angst, the activity, the deadline, and so on, having a lot of process, a lot of pressure. At the, also, the feeling level, and that's helpful for both the existential angst and the, and the functional angst. To, like you said, you work with the body to sort of experience your body as this borderless space, not to sort of uh, limited by the skin or by the shape or by the image, but it's beyond, beyond the impression of skin, beyond the impression, the body as universal awareness, as a universal body. So sensations have no, they're not bouncing against your skin. They're not coming inside of you or from outside of you, bouncing against your skin. They're like, they're, yeah. at the same time, there is a, the wisdom, the body, body, mind wisdom, that there are there is a certain way in which the body can function that is less stressful than other ways. <laughs> Maybe I don't know, spreading a little bit your schedule or. Uh, um, uh, getting some help in getting some things done, whatever. I, 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 there are, uh, there is also a functional aspect to the tasks that we take, that we take on. And but the key thing is of, to be happy. You know, if you're if you're under time pressure and so on, that you're okay about it. You're okay with it. You're gonna, you know, it feels sometimes a. Uh, Goodness, I, I need to just take a minute, a break. You go out, you stretch a little bit, you look at the sky and you come back and you're enjoying it. Uh, and sometimes it's a mixture of enjoying and having to. You see, you have to, if it's about food, shelter and clothing, we have to, we have to take care of the food, shelter and clothing issues. So then it's a matter of balancing, of the, to be okay, to be yes with your commitment to a certain activity, even though it's not your passion, but it's something that you feel, okay, this is this will help with paying the bills and it's okay, it's not such a big tragedy, I can do that. To be on board with that, to be on board with the challenge it's gonna take, provide to your body and your mind. And it goes where it goes, it goes where it goes. And it may go, it may go to a place where you, decide that, okay, that maybe that's not the direction I want to continue. We don't, we don't know. We don't know. Uh, but you don't want to live your life. Using the breath in order to bear with your life or to put up with your life. Yeah. which is okay on occasion, of course. Yes, absolutely. Um, sometimes, I'm just now getting off a little bit, but sometimes we, we engage in certain activities out of the wrong 
place to start with. I'm just speaking generically, okay? Uh, and then we then we we live the consequences of that. Let's say we operate from a fear or from a sense of lack. We make a decision out of sense of worry. So it's important uh, to when you come to a decision. to invite yourself to contemplate the situation as consciousness. Not as the download, oh my goodness, what happened to me yesterday, what's gonna to happen to me tomorrow, and so on. Of course, we all have that, that download. But that download maintains, maintains the, the pattern, maintains, it's a repeat, it repeats itself. Anyways, um, <laughs> getting off the topic, but and yes, the, the relaxation in the midst of activity to turn your attention to the body and sort of beingness spaciousness, this openness, allow, allow it to sort of base through, basing through your entire body uh, is, uh, is uh, it's, a, it's a, in, in, in good direction. There is a magical aspect. The more we uh, turn our attention to truth, the more we contemplate the reality of consciousness and its universality, its impersonality. the more uh, magic there is in our life. Synchronicities and situations that arise out of unexpected. questions?
you know, the in the Taoist tradition, they used to spend quite a bit of time in nature, the monks or whatever you call them. Because uh, nature is it's so there's a flow, there's the wind, the river. life happening so yes, fluid the sky we can learn a lot from nature Nothing is holding holding on to anything. <laughs> well, sometimes there are these vines that climb all the way up. <laughs> it's a flow, life is a flow. And uh, we are this flow, we are life, life living itself. So many ways, so many forms, so many shapes, so dynamic and, and easy. So interconnected. It's not possible to exist in isolation. We don't, there is no such thing. You know, the impression that I am in me, that's, it's, it stinks, <laughs> in a way. <laughs> I mean, in the sense of being a separate self, you know, goodness. We love it when we, we're together, we embrace, you know. when we talk to each other. And we see the images sometimes, you know, the image arrives and, oh my goodness, am I, am I being loved? Am I saying the right thing? We, we can see that, see, we can see our own judgments too. To, to see it and not to buy into it, you know, not to sort of give it power, not to give it power. And to give give power only to consciousness. Our our true self, our true our reality. Not not the story of me and my past and all of that. We all have these stories and not not to go too much into those stories. Actually there's no need to go into them at all. Magdi. Shiva. Salut, Shiva. Salut, salut. Hang on, hang on. I just finished my exercise program and, uh, okay. and you were talking about this nature thing and now you're talking about something and I just want to share. It's not a question, it's just a sharing, uh, which sort of completely validates what you just said. Not that what you said needs any validation, but uh, I feel just to share it. So I have this little group of new friends who uh, uh, there is like an, a tremendous. Oops, I think he, you froze, no? 
this is something. Are you working? Oh, oh, okay. Can you now I hear you. Now I hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Tell me if it freezes because we have a lot of wind here. So, oh, no. yes. God forbid you would miss a piece of my fabulous story. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 so there is this there is this group of friends and the beauty of it is that we can live completely so that everybody can live exactly how he or she feels living um has to go through them and there is enough love and and appreciation to tell each other if um somebody's stepping on somebody else's feet uh, without knowing so there's a lot of honesty there's a lot of strength and there's a lot of love. And we do this uh, song circles together where we sing. And the singing is just the most amazing uh, nonverbal communication because everybody's singing their own song and their own tune, their own, their own melody, their own rhythm. But somehow we always manage to get like the five different melodies and songs and, and rhythms together as one harmonious, beautiful end result. And so we, we started calling ourselves the songgas songgasms because it's like an orgasm through singing. So the songgasms, so we were together. And when was that? Like maybe 10 days ago or 14 days ago, we had the last one. And something was processing in, in this one. There was this like stuff coming up. And suddenly I feel myself dressing up. So I live in Hawaii and I wear like sweatshirts all the time, sweatpants. And suddenly I take out my linen pan and my most fancy Gucci thing and my, my loafers and I arrived there and I realized I was completely off. I was not because of the clothing, but because of my internal uh, wanting to, you know, understand, uh, uh, second guessing myself, am I saying the right thing? Uh, do they love me? So I was not as I always am with them normally in the sort of state of like free fusion. But I went back for some reason, just to, I guess, understand, I went back into the sort of detached, um, I mean, I should say separated, uh, version of myself where which I used to be for my whole life 90% of my time this sort of like the little parrot who wants to be loved and who's doing everything in order to please in order to you know uh, fit in etc and the more I did it the worse it became it like I, I was in such a state of suffering internally meanwhile Externally, I was continuing to maintain the story, you know, and 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 la and la and la. And so, the experience of it was incredible. Uh, we had the day after I had some sort of like conversation with one of the friends in the group, and uh, and it was amazing, you know, to just see that we all seem to go through this every once in a while. That. That, that actually the fact that we want to fit in is a sign for us to be outside, to be, to, to imagine to be outside. So this idea of wanting to fit in is a sign for us that we are actually living from a state of separation. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was such an amazing, powerful uh, life teaching I received. And I just felt like I wanted to share that because yeah. you were talking about it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Magdi, can I say something? Yes. Hello, Anna Maria. Yes. Thank you for this man for sharing this story. Hi, Karen. It's such a beautiful story because we all go through these stories. But because he's so awake and aware and he could realize halfway through and he vibrates in this ocean of nothingness that we all vibrate. I bet he helped a lot of us just by his awareness, uh, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. We, uh, we help, we're helping each other all, all the time whenever we, whenever we, our love, our love for truth is, is one, is one love, you know. So yes, it's absolutely in uh, in coming to 
in other words, in seeing through, seeing the pattern arising, experiencing it, feeling it, noticing it, and uh, and also taking taking the action, the appropriate action. That okay, fine. I see it. I'm, that's not where I want to go. That's not what I want to share. That's not what I want to cultivate in the relationship. That's not what I want to spread in the world. Absolutely. Whenever we we turn our attention in that direction and we walk that path, we're walking it on behalf of everybody. We're walking it hand in hand with everybody. Yes, yes. Like uh, when you are in a room with a lot of people and it's dark and you turn on a little light, it doesn't matter, a flashlight or your phone, you, you know, you press on the light on your phone, it, it brings some light to everybody. And, and we, we all love the light, we recognize it, even though maybe sometimes the mind isn't recognizing it. Sometimes we don't sort of, we have, haven't yet acknowledged that it's not at the surface. At a deeper level, yes. We, we are yes, we are yes to the love, we are yes to the truth, we are yes to the light. Yes, it's always, always, always on our love, you know, to, to, uh, to, to sort of, to be loved. Our desire to be loved is, is in fact, not so much our sense of separation, it's, it's our love for, to, for the light. And yes, it is also being somehow unaware that I am the light, but it's a love, love for light. We all love, love. We all love, love. We all love happiness, beauty, joy, freedom, sharing, listening and being listened to. Yes, yes. In, in that, in, in our reality, in our truth, in, in God's being, we are one. There is, there's no separation. As our true nature, we are one. And the forms, you know, confuse us via the senses. We somehow we believe we're the, we're the form. We perceive a form and some, you know, maybe it's a process of, you know, a natural process of development from the baby mind to the ego mind to the mind of unhappiness and then to the mind of contemplation. It could be that it's just the process, it seems. Uh, the journey, the human path. And we're very fortunate when, uh, let's say, we come upon, we come, up, we come upon the, the, the path beyond unhappiness, which is the, the path of happiness. So we go through unhappiness and then we, somehow the attention turns towards happiness. We start, we become pioneers or explorers or investigators, students of happiness, students of love. That's a beautiful um, stage of our journey. Then there is the, the live, living and lived understanding of our oneness, of our ins, ins, inseparateness, inseparateness, inseparability, a living, lived sense of that, like uh, the inseparability of the wave and the ocean, or the current in the ocean. We are all water. We are water. One reality. So my breath is your breath, and my being is your being. My life is your life. I like to be one with you, Magdi. I know I'm one with everybody, but it's so wonderful to be one with so much beauty.
The beauty is our beauty, is the beauty of being, is the beauty of, of consciousness. It's, there's nothing personal about it, yes. And uh, you know, a shadow is the sun shining onto a tree. That's what a shadow is. A shadow is just the sun. It's a sun. It's a sunlight shining onto a tree. There is no darkness. So the, the impression that there is something in the way is a, a mind impression that is made out of whatever mind impressions are made out of thoughts and sensations. And to, to understand that anything that I experience, whatever it is that I experience, does not have any implication upon that which I am. Whatever thoughts, whatever sensation, whatever perception, whatever mentation you have, does not have any uh, effect or it's, it, does, it does not determine that which you are. That which you are is determined by your very being, by your very being, the, the amnes of, of I, the being awareness of, of the self, of consciousness. That is self-sufficient. It defines itself. It determines itself. It arises out of itself and points to itself. I points to I, awareness points to awareness. To, uh, be clear about that, in that the clarity about that it arises from the understanding that what, whatever you are, cannot, is not a perceived, what that which you are is not a perceived event, it's not, it's not a memory, an image, a storyline, that which you are is not a body mind, a, it's not a person, that which you are is consciousness, and a consciousness is not defined via the mind, or it's not defined via the body, or it's not defined via the world. The world does not define you, the mind does not define you. The body does not define you. You are defined by you. Consciousness is defined by consciousness. Awareness is defined by awareness. So the, the whole condition, the whole storyline that I am a woman, that I'm a man, that I'm a person, that I am this, that I am that, all of that is a storyline that's appearing on the screen of awareness. And whenever it appears on the screen of awareness, it's just an appearance, it's a mind appearance. Mind appearance appearing from where? From the universe. It's all interconnected, there's no closed yes. system. There is no closed system. It's appearing like the weather, it's appearing. So it's clear, oh, here's an appearance. Oh, I am a beautiful person. Wow, I'm a great person. Oh, I'm a great father, I'm a great mother. Blah, blah, blah. It's an appearance. And the appearance, being clear, it's an appearance. So that I am not an appearance. That which I am is just viewing an appearance. I'm viewing the past. I'm viewing the past. Why is it the past? Because it's gone. The thought is gone. The image is gone. It's, I'm viewing the past. I'm viewing the past. When I say I'm viewing, I'm viewing the past. I'm never viewing the present. In the present, I am. In the present, I isness. Awareness is. In the present, presence means the eternity of being, the eternity of awareness, the eternity of consciousness. That is presence. Whenever I'm viewing, I'm viewing the past. And it's okay, we can view the past. I have no problem with viewing the past. 
but not to mistake myself to be a character in the past, to be a character in time and space. Oh my goodness, what's happening to me? You see? That is the falsehood. Oh my goodness, what's happening to me is the falsehood. Because nothing is happening to you. You as the reality of being, the infinite invisible, the undeniable reality of consciousness. So be very watchful when you refer to self, yourself, when you re refer to yourself as I, when you say I, what do you mean? What do you mean? Stop. What do you mean? What do you mean? To talk to yourself. What do I mean by I? Do I mean Anna Maria? Do I mean Maggie? Do I mean Karen? Do I mean Frank? What do I mean when I say I? And if you're meaning, if you're saying Anna Maria, or you're saying Frank or Zoe, you're referring to the body. You're not referring to the you're referring to the body because because your mom, your dad, they've they've called you Anna Maria. You say they've called the body this baby. And they had a baby. They said, We're gonna call this baby Anna Maria. Here is a beautiful girl, Anna Maria, you see. That's what they, they so that's the name of the body. And you also you call this body Anna Maria. I have no problem because why do I want to go change the name? I mean you could, but you know, it's okay. I'm okay with Maggie. So I call the body Maggie too. You see. So I, I am not that which I perceive, you see. I am not that which I perceive. So very careful when you say I, what do you what do you is a tendency to quickly say I, oh yeah, I I I I I slow down, slow down. What do you mean by I? What do you mean by I? Yes. Yes, a constant re revisiting truth. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, well, very lovely to be with you all. <laughs> Thank you for your, your company, Charlie, Shiva, Marga, Josh, Joyce, Anna, Maria, Karen, Holger, Frank, Little Grace, Richard, hey, Richard, Holly. Zoe, hi Kelly, John. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you.